Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Weekend Cooking with Puneet. Today we are going to prepare a delicious biryani, paneer lababdar biryani. So we'll start with soaking rice. We'll take biryani rice, maybe about 400 grams of rice. Uh, wash it well a couple of times uh, with water. And after washing, just add some water and keep it aside for soaking. Now, this will help us in ensuring that we don't waste time on cooking rice at a later stage when we want to do it. Uh, it's just to help us save some time. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, prepare the birista. Birista is basically fried onion which goes into all kinds of biryani. Um, to do this, I am taking one onion, one large onion. You can also use a couple of small onions or three also is good. Uh, note that you need to slice onions very finely uh, into layers. Uh, you can see the layers that I am trying to do here. Once you slice them, uh, just spread them so that there is no stickiness among them. Um, you use a pan, add some oil into the pan, let it become hot, add some mustard seeds into the oil <clears throat> and wait till they start spluttering. That's when you know that the oil is hot enough. Very carefully start dropping the onions for frying. There's a high probability that oil will spill out when you add onion for the first time because it's very hot. So you've got to be very careful when you're adding onion. If you want to add onion a little early, even that is fine. After you add these onions, keep stirring them, keep sauteing them. Don't uh, stop because when oil is hot, onions get fried very quickly. In, in fact, they take some time in the initial, uh, uh, you know, initial minute or couple of minutes. But the moment they are hot, uh, in a fraction of a second, they might any time. Uh, get burnt. So you have to be very careful and cook them uh, till they achieve a light brownish color. The moment you achieve this light brown color, turn off the gas immediately. Uh, the oil is still hot, so they will still continue to cook. So you don't have to worry about cooking them further. So once that is done, once you achieve this kind of a texture, I mean, this is, this is very, very important for you to know that you don't have to wait till they actually become fully brown in color. The moment they are lightish brown color, immediately take them out and uh, drain the oil uh, using uh, uh, tissue paper or uh, a strainer like I'm using. And then I drop them onto a tissue paper and keep them aside. Uh, we'll need them uh, at a later stage. So right, so now our <clears throat> rice is ready. Uh, ready as in it's uh, on for soaking. And we have the berries started. Now we are going to prepare the puree. So the primary puree will be a paste kind of a puree that we are going to prepare. For this, we are going to use about five or six onions. Uh, we are going to roughly chop them because ultimately this will go into a puree. So everything is going to become like a paste. So just rough chopping is good enough. We are not looking for any texture or any kind of a uh, pattern here and we also roughly chop about seven to eight tomatoes um, once we are having these chopped tomatoes in onions in place uh, we are going to take a pan add a few teaspoons of oil into it again add some mustard seeds to ensure that uh, we know when the oil is hot when it is hot, drop some cumin seeds, bay leaf, green cardamoms, about 7, 8, 10 of them also is good, 1 or 2 black cardamom, 2-3 uh, cinnamon sticks and uh, continue to saute them. So these are uh, basically the ingredients that we are going to take off after the <coughs> complete uh, uh, no, preparation is done. In fact, uh, before we put into the mixer jar, we are going to take these out. And we'll also add about uh, uh, 
three or four uh, red chilies. After sauteing, we are going to add the onions that we had cut and kept aside already. Now, we are going to cook onions for about two, three, four minutes, depending on the time that we take to become slightly translucent in color. That's when we know that onions are uh, have started to cook. And at that point of time, we are going to add about eight to 10 of uh, cashew nuts, uh, a couple of green chilies, some ginger, and uh, about seven to eight garlic cloves, and we'll continue to saute the entire cooking. After some time, maybe two, three minutes, we are going to add the tomatoes into this preparation. And the moment you add tomatoes, what's going to happen is uh, the heat is going to reduce because tomatoes come with their own water content. And uh, we're going to add some fresh coriander um, and continue to cook this. When we see that it's getting cooked well, we're going to add one or two spoons of red chili powder depending on the kind of taste that you want to achieve. So paneer lababdar is basically a, a spicy variant of a vegetable dish. So I would prefer two or three spoons of uh, green chili powder and uh, a spoon of turmeric to add some taste. Add a glass of water when you see that the tomatoes have become mushy and let it for about five to six minutes. While they cook, uh, we are going to prepare um, um, slice a couple of onions and one or two tomatoes uh, chop them finely these are going to again be a part of the dish itself so what we are going to do is we are going to saute these and then add the puree that we prepare we're also having about five six ginger cloves and uh, a handful of uh, coriander uh, fresh coriander leaves here so once uh, this is cooked, uh, we are going to take out bay leaves, cinnamon sticks, cardamom. These are not going into the mixer jar. So take them off and <clears throat> keep the preparation aside. Let it cool down a little bit. Let it take some time and rest itself. Uh, at that point of time, what happens is it starts absorbing the flavors and that adds taste to the dish itself. In the meanwhile, uh, we are going to start cooking rice. Add two or three glasses of water into a pan or bowl. Uh, when the water is started starting to boil, we are going to add a few cardamom, some cinnamon, a green chili, and a couple of spoons of salt. Uh, now note that we are going to boil rice in this. We are not going to use a cooker. And when the rice has achieved, uh, you know, about 70-80% of, uh, uh, you know, it, it's 78%, 70-80% ready, we are going to take it out because we are also going to cook the rice along with the, uh, uh, the preparation of uh, uh, biryani itself. So we take off the cinnamon, uh, cardamom and green chili and we put the rice that was kept for soaking. Uh, we let this rice boil uh, for a few minutes and in the meantime just to better utilize time we are going to use a mixer to convert the earlier preparation into a puree so we'll add all this into a mixer jar and uh, grind it till we get a fine paste so paneer lababdar is a very famous uh, vegetable that is uh, served across the country uh, it's quite famous in india it's a very popular north indian cuisine known for its rich creamy texture and very flavorful tomato based gravy while uh, this gets ready uh, fine paste ready you can you can see now that we have a very fine paste and uh, simultaneously uh, as we see the rice also has cooked uh, as you can see here uh, it, it's soft 
the moment you feel that it is soft enough, the moment you press and you feel it is soft, that's when you know that the rice is cooked. So what we are going to do is we are going to take off water from the rice and uh, keep only the rice aside. So I'm going to use a strainer here and transfer the rice into uh, this so that all the water exits from here. So now we are going to use a large pan. This is going to be our final preparation. Uh, add as much ghee as you like, depending on your appetite. Add some mustard seeds again, you know, uh, when they're cracking, that's when you need to add the uh, onions and uh, ginger cloves that we had cut and kept aside. Uh, saute these for a couple of minutes. And when they are, uh, when you feel that they're turning, uh, you know, slightly translucent that's when you can add a spoon of salt and after that you're going to add onion uh, sorry uh, tomatoes uh, and continue to saute them once you see that they are getting cooked well you can add a couple of spoons of kashmiri lal mirch And then here comes our puree. So we are going to drop the entire puree into the preparation and mix all these very well. So our base is kind of ready now. This is the time when you can add the paneer cubes into the gravy that we have prepared. Now this is almost kind of paneer lavab the uh, gravy that is ready. Uh, I'm not sure if it is in a format to be ready to be consumed with chapatis or rotis, but it, it looks like it, it is kind of ready for that. But we are going to uh, make a biryani with this. So to make it a little creamier, we are going to add a little bit of curd and then we are going to add uh, some bit of uh, biryani masala, maybe two spoons of biryani masala. A spoon of garam masala and we are going to add a handful of coriander leaves, kasuri methi and uh, pudina leaves. So these, these are some important ingredients that give you that flavor of biryani. And then we are going to layer it with rice. Now at times biryani is layered uh, in, in multiple layers like this layer of uh, the vegetables and then there is rice and then there is some more vegetables and then there is some rice uh, you could do that if you want to experiment otherwise this is good enough and we'll also add the fried onions that we had prepared earlier and close the lid now this is a way that i'm trying to give uh, dum to the biryani this is kind of uh, you know you usually use a to make a dum biryani what you do is you use some atta close the lid. Uh, that's the way we usually do but I am trying to just put a heavy weight on the biryani itself so that the air doesn't go out and there's enough dum in the biryani. Uh, while that cooks, I am going to prepare uh, some onion raita to savor with the biryani. Um, you can use a lot of ingredients here. You can use tomatoes, you can use cucumber. Uh, you can use some salt, uh, some sugar, um, some bit of pudina leaves. These are all optional choices. So first I'm going to uh, put the onions into curd and uh, keep it for some time. And then I'm going to take other ingredients like tomatoes and uh, pudina leaves and add these into the curd itself. So biryani, as you all know, is a very famous dish in India. Uh, I think mostly Hyderabadi biryani and Laknabi biryani are what uh, very famous, very famous uh, foods in India. We also have Chattinad biryani here in the south. We have Ambur biryani. Uh, and, and there are several ways of uh, cooking biryani. There's uh, one way is to uh, cook dum biryani. There's also a way wherein uh, you can cook something called as a pakki biryani. And it's, it's one of the most ordered food 
uh, in India. In fact, I remember from uh, last year's Zomato survey, uh, biryani was the number one product that was uh, ordered in most pin codes across the country. So while our raita is ready, I hope uh, the biryani also is ready. Uh, it's the moment of truth. Let's see what's gonna come out. There we go. I think the moment I opened this, I felt that the four hour effort that went into making this was all worth it. Uh, by the look of it, and then when I actually tasted it, I really felt that it was a great decision to go ahead and cook this at home. So I'll encourage you to make this wonderful biryani at your home and let me know how you liked it. So this is weekend cooking with Puneet and uh, some delicious paneer labab dar biryani. That's for today. See you next week with a new episode. Thank you.